Oh my God, February was absolutely bananas in terms of fragrance sales. I don't know what these websites did to our psyche or to mine. I guess I'll just speak for myself, but I went absolutely crazy around Valentine's Day and President's Day. And I think there might have even been a sale like end of January into February somewhere, somehow that caught my attention. A lot of fragrances have made their way into my house. I wanted to share 10 from what I ordered that weekend, not all but 10 of the ones that I am probably the most excited to wear and that I really wanted to share my thoughts with you on. By the way, before we get started, two things. Did you shop during the President's Day sale? If so, what is your favorite purchase from that weekend? And then second, I wanted to say thank you. I am filming this the first weekend in March and I put a poll up asking of the videos that are forthcoming from me, which would you be most interested in seeing? I only was able to put up five in the poll. And I have to say, I was a little surprised by the responses in a happy way. The winner is must have spring florals. My you know, little floral lover's heart is so delighted and surprised to see that. I would have thought that you all would be sick of those floral videos by now. And so I'm really eager to get that list together and film it for you. So give me a couple of weeks and you will see that. I really want to bring you like my most amazing, from my own perspective, of course, my own opinion, which is all I can offer, my most amazing florals for you that I would say definitely get your nose on this spring. Florals are the category that make my heart sing the most. And I love the variety across the floral category that's sort of different ends of the spectrum. You're really heavy, sticky, sweet, deep, overly mature, cloying, fill up a room and make the flowers wilt kind of florals. <laughs> All the way to the other end of the spectrum with your really light, wispy, ethereal, very pleasant, girly florals and everything in between. I just love the category. But let's get into these 10 fragrances that I really want to share with you today. So you know, I had the 30% off sale was so avant-garde. I shopped the sale too. And one of the fragrances I was so delighted to pick up, I had no interest in it until people started talking about it. And then I thought, what's happening with this fragrance? Looked it up and thought, ooh, this is a combination of some of my all-time favorite notes, citrus, gardenia, pear, vanilla, sandalwood, I'm sold. <laughs> Dolce Melodia. Y'all sold this thing out. Probably if the sale started on Friday, I think probably by late Friday evening, early Saturday morning, y'all have bought so avant-garde out of all of its st stock. So thank you to everyone that shopped that sale. I shopped it too and purchased it for myself. One thing I do want to say is that this is a velvet bottle. I didn't know that. Looking at the reviews online, I thought that this was maybe a glass or a ceramic bottle that was painted yellow. So just keep that in mind. I don't mind that. I much would have preferred a solid surface. I'm not, as you know, a fan of the whole velvet thing, but okay, let's get past that. My friends, when I tell you that this is one of the brightest, most refreshing, delightful, floral, citrus, woody smells, and the addition of that sweet pear, this is very, very dreamy to me as a fragrance. Did I mention that it also has musk? And so that on top of a bed of musk, what I love about this is that it has the addition of this very zingy bright citrus, which then puts it in its own category. I really enjoy this. I think it's so delightful. It's a winner in this house. Everyone who smells it really liked it. So I can see why this is a very hyped up fragrance and I'm super excited to wear it this spring. I finally picked up my first Tamin, Tamin, however you say the house, fragrance. And this is Patiala. This was on sale in Joma Shop. You know, me and Joma Shop, we go way back. So <laughs> I had to get my bottle. I do like the blue bottles. These are really pretty. The fragrance itself, you know, when you talk about a rose by, is it a rose by any other name? Is that the expression? This is a rose in its own category. It's not your typical rose. I appreciate that this is a super unique rose fragrance. It's been compared to Baccarat Rouge 540. And I do think it has some of the sort of airy sweetness of that fragrance, maybe even a touch of something that's in the saffron direction, even though I don't think saffron is a note listed for this, but you get rose and citrus, other white florals, amber. And I love that it has an aldehyde component. There's something fresh and airy and bright about this. It reminds me of old school perfumery where the fragrance was super complex, hard to distinguish what it exactly is that you're smelling, but it all comes together in this really super beautiful composition that feels elevated, unique, refined, and maybe even a touch regal, I would add. I have it sprayed here. I do think this is a fragrance that does need to be worn on skin to be appreciated. On skin, you get a combination of the freshness and the warmth from the amber and whatever other notes are in here that make it feel warm. And I love the juxtaposition of those two, the freshness with the warmth in this fragrance. I think this is rather unique and rather sophisticated. You do need to try on skin. As I always say, you know, sometimes smelling 
off of a blotter is a very limited experience. So when possible, spray on your skin and get a sense of how it meshes with you. And then also spray your blotter or spray a piece of clothing and step back, leave the room, come back, 30 minutes later, and then get near the object, the blotter or your clothing and get a sense of what it is smelling like in the air. That's really for me, the best way to experience what a fragrance truly smells like and how other people will experience it on you as well. So this is a big thumbs up. Loving this. One of the most lovely surprises from what I purchased from So Avant Garde, because this was a blind buy. I looked at the notes and thought, I think I will really like that. I hope I will really like it. You know, it's... <laughs> It's very iffy when you blind buy. This is Vert Désir from the Veronica Buy line. Wow, one of the most lovely minty fragrances I have come across in a very long time. I'm a fan of mint and fragrances, especially as we get into warm weather, although I do think mint plays nicely in the winter as well. This is the most divine combination of mint and other notes that I've smelled in a long time, and I've smelled quite a few mint fragrances. I enjoy mint and fragrances. I would describe this best as a combination of the scent that you get from spearmint gum. If you think about how that is fresh and refreshing and brightening, it sort of like lifts your mood combined with, and I don't think this is listed as a note, but if you have rubbed fresh basil between your fingers, we grow basil on our back porch and we use it to cook with the scent that comes off of fresh basil and maybe even a little tiny touch of rosemary. I love the sort of herbal minty nature of this and the fact that it is unisex for me leaning a little tiny bit feminine. It is just so refreshing and ethereal and light and bright. It makes you feel like you are the freshest, cleanest human on the, <laughs> on the planet. I could see dousing myself in the very deep heat of summer with this and just feeling like minty cool, that minty coolness. But it also has this sort of artistic perfumey touch to it so that it isn't just all mint. Because nobody wants to smell just like toothpaste. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, this is exquisite, an exquisite fragrance. Maybe my favorite from the line so far because of its creativity. And I have about four of these and have sampled several others. So I am lifting this up, lifting this up really high for late into the spring and into the summer here and really all year round. If you wanna smell fresh and clean and bright and like you've been refreshed by your fragrance. Beautiful, beautiful, really unique. Okay, friends, sticking with fresh. If you have been missing out on the grass scent of your dreams, a grassy scent of your dreams, <laughs> I got you covered here. I hesitated purchasing this because I've heard mixed reviews on it. Some people said it doesn't last long or that it's screechy and it smells synthetic and, you know, all of these really ugly critiques. <laughs> but this thing is so good. This is Highline from Bond Number no. 9. I have been waiting, waiting for this to come in. I do, you know, me and the bottles, we've talked about this, but I love that this looks like a subway coin the symbol there for the house. If you're familiar with Highline, it is a raised railroad track in New York City down on the lower west side, lower west side of the, the city of Manhattan. And it's not very long, but it's super novel, chic, cute, like a must see. There are gardens on either side of the railroad track. It's been converted into a walkway and there are benches and there are places along the walkway where you can stop and look down the avenues and kind of get a vista of some of the tall buildings in New York. And it's just like a whole vibe. I love that there's a scent named after it because of that. So the name is meaningful for me, for my experiences on the High Line. And this fragrance, I can see why people think it's screechy. Let me be clear. If you spray it on and you stick your nose in it and that's all you do, it's going to smell a little bit screechy. Fine. However, this is the type of fragrance that needs to be experienced in the air. You need to spray yourself, walk out and let other people tell you how it smells. I immediately got complimented on this in my house <laughs> by the people in my house and they were a tough crowd. They all liked this and thought that it smelled fresh and clean and fun and bright. And just overall really nice. Yes, it does smell very grassy. It smells very bright. It smells zingy. It smells a little green as grass does. And I bet this has a little bit of vetiver or something in it that gives it that sort of like hay-like um, scent deep in the background. But this is a freshly cut grass smell perhaps with some touches of florals. I'm not even looking at the notes. Maybe it has like some freesia or one of those florals that comes across really bright, like a floral soapy scent, but mostly a fresh, clean grass. 
this is a big win, especially seeing the reactions of my family when I put this on. So I'm really, really delighted that this is a win because it was a blind buy. I think I've tried like one of the bonbons from this, you know, that's uh, the names of the samples from bond number nine, the bonbons, but I don't remember to be honest with you. And I was kind of scared. So, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Someone recommended this next fragrance to me. This house was not on my radar at all. And I have a bunch of samples from them to try now because if any of them are as good as this, I definitely want to get into more. This is called Mellow Musks and the fragrance house is Myth out of Bangkok, Thailand. And I think they have an office here in San Francisco or somewhere on the West Coast because that's where this was mailed out from. And Myth stands for Made in Thailand. Mellow Musks. This is for those of you that enjoy a somewhat gourmand fragrance because I would say this is in that category without being overly foodie or edible and you want something to transition into the spring and summer away from sort of those sticky, sweet, spicy, fall, wintry types of scents. Oh my god. It is creamy vanilla coconut. This is so nostalgic and comforting and enveloping and cozy. There's a little bit of a light peachy note you know, peach is a funny note. It can come across lots of different ways here. It comes across almost like um, just sort of a sweet accord in the fragrance. It reminds me this fragrance a lot of Hufflepuff from House of Siage in that direction. Imagine Hufflepuff with some creaminess to it and actually dialed back on the sweet aspect. So this is like a subtle, musky, creamy, sweet, coconutty, your skin, but much, much better type of scent. I really enjoy this. I could see wearing this around the house. I could see absolutely rocking this over the summer, especially as the day cools off and you get into evening hours and you want something creamy and sweet and comforting and cozy. Oh my gosh, this is super duper good. Moderate longevity and uh, performance overall, really good and not that expensive, friends. I think this bottle, how many ounces are you? I, I don't remember how big it is. Let's just say it's a 50 mil bottle because I don't remember exactly. I think I got this in somewhere between the 70 to $80 range straight off of the website. So Mellow Musks. By the way, I'll link everything below. Check out those links if you are interested in these fragrances. Yes, yes. It's milky, vanilla, coconut, peachy. Ooh, so good. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, you know that I have been interested in the house of Antonio Croce since I purchased Unica from the house and fell head over heels in love with that one. So during the So Avant Garde sale, while these were 30% off, I picked up two. I picked up Meraviglia, which I'm really enjoying. I'll talk about that in another video, but I wanted to highlight for you all as we get into the spring season here, the gorgeous Ardente. Ardente. I do enjoy these bottles. They're quirky. They're different. They're interesting. They're, you know, like a multifaceted jewel. They remind me of One World Trade Center. That building looks a lot like this. So it has a special place in my heart as a former New Yorker, etc., etc. This fragrance. If you want an out of the box fruity fragrance for spring and summer, please do give this one a try. See if you can get a sample of it. And if you're bold, go ahead and just purchase this off of So Avant Garde. It's really, really good. It is one of the tangiest, brightest, fruity openings I think I've ever experienced. And the thing about this is I would say it's like really squarely unisex, although there are some masculine aspects of this and some feminine aspects. The opening of this fragrance has a combination of blood orange, grapefruit, rhubarb, a little bit of pepper. It's just zingy and it's tart and it's bright and it's captivating. Captivating is the word that I would use for this opening. You want to keep sniffing and enjoying and figuring this out. As the fragrance settles down, a little bit of sweetness comes out and softness from the vanilla and the tonka bean. There's some woodiness in the base. So I would call this tart and fruity, but also sweet and woody in the base. And it's just a nice contrast between those types of accords that make this unique, interesting, different. I don't have anything else in my collection that smells quite like this. And I don't know that I've smelled anything quite like this. So I think I'm gonna really enjoy this. Think about a really sort of tart fruit juice that is freshly squeezed and add in your mind like a woody accord to that with maybe some sweetness from a vanilla syrup, like just a little bit. Wow, this is a really unique fragrance. So I wanted to make sure to highlight this one for you all. Okay. I'm calling Evelyn from the Ebb Effect. If you are in the audience, I need you to come down to the carpet. I'm calling you to the carpet because I have to blame this next one on you. And you did not lead me astray. I was hesitant to purchase this fragrance because it is like beyond pricey. Even with 30% off, it was quite a splurge for me. 
but she tends to have tastes that I align with. I'll uh, link her channel in my description box if you want to check her out. This is Blonde Amber from Clive Christian. And I thought, how different can this be from all of the other similar fragrances that my husband and I have across our two collections? And yes, while this does have some similarities to existing fragrances, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, this was worth every penny of the splurge. This one in particular, I can't say that for all the fragrances from Clive Christian. Jump Up and Kiss Me Ecstatic is the other one that I have and really enjoy. Some of the others I've tried just haven't done it for me. This really, 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 really and truly, absolutely, completely, definitively, 100% without a doubt, does it for me. When my husband spritzes this on, because it is on his shelf, although I plan to wear this too, but when he spritzes this on and comes into my space, I'm like, you are wearing that Clive Christian, aren't you? <laughs> Between this and Naxos, that man has me in a complete chokehold with <laughs> his fragrances. Amazing fragrance. I love that there's a combination of notes in here that just give you the most divine late fall winter fragrance experience of your life. It's deeply resinous and sticky. It's boozy from rum. It's got a little grapefruit in there for a touch, a touch of bright tartness in the background. It has these sticky, sweet, syrupy, dried fruits in it. It has tonka bean. It even has florals, vanilla, sandalwood, spices, myrrh. I mean, it's like the kitchen sink and it smells like everything you love about deep winter fragrances. Late fall, winter, like I said, cold weather fragrances. I mean, I hope he wears this all year round, even in air conditioning, because it is one that makes you want to like jump somebody's bones. <laughs> and I think the same would be true of a lady wearing it as well. I am going to smell amazing wearing this. My husband smells fantastic. It is unisex leaning a little masculine, but the florals and the vanilla and the sweetness in here, that dried fruit, tonka goodness, tonka bean goodness, just wow. Just wow. So I had to be sure to share this one with you and my experience with it. So in addition to being a floral lover and being really in that space right now as we move into warmer months, in addition to really liking fresh and clean fragrances like the Vert Désir, I have been obsessed lately with thinking about your skin but better scents. And then a subset of that is musk fragrances. So I have a couple of videos coming up on both of those topics that I'm super interested in. In fact, I thought those would be voted higher in the poll that I did only because like <laughs> they're on my mind. So I'm like, aren't they on your mind too? And that's not necessarily the case. But one of the fragrances that I sniffed a while back and finally picked up because Blue Mercury, that's where I shopped for this through. Blue Mercury had a 20% off sale. So I have been very interested in Trish McAvoy. I'm not the fondest of these weird shaped bottles, but that is okay. And this fragrance is the number three, the number three fragrance and it's called Snowdrop and Crystal Flowers. This is an eau de toilette. And I will say it's about moderate longevity, not super long. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about this fragrance, but I enjoy that this is a clean, floral, soapy, musky fragrance. Some of the keynotes, and I love the combination of this, freesia, which can be like a soapy white floral, musk, Peony, beautiful, bright, fresh spring, light floral, snowdrop. And snowdrop is a fantasy note for floral that is clean and cool feeling. There's lemonade in the fragrance, a scent of lemonade, berries and lychee and some other uh, florals and vanilla. So it's quite sort of the melange of scents in here. But think of it as white, floral, fresh, musky, light and cool. It's a refreshing, cool feeling but the vanilla in the fragrance and the muskiness also give it this sort of like your skin, but better skin scent warmth type of thing. In fact, now that I'm smelling it, it's kind of smelling like spring fling from bond number nine. You remember my story about that purple bottle with the big floral on it. That's sort of like musky, clean floral with a little bit of sweet woodiness in the background. This is really neat. And I love the name of it. Snowdrop and crystal flowers which evokes what? Like this musky, cool, floral feeling. Really a neat fragrance. And I saved maybe my favorite fragrance from recent hauls for last. And it's not because it's a mind-blowing fragrance or that it's so unique, you just can't do without it. It's because I had this very visceral reaction to it where it brought up this sort of nostalgic memory of a place and feeling that I've never even had. <laughs> I know that sounds really esoteric and bizarre, but 
I've got it sprayed here and uh, I, I enjoy this so much. I wanted to spray it over what I was wearing even, which is Herba Gold from Zerzhoff, which is another recent purchase that I am just enjoying so much. But, oh, I didn't tell you what the fragrance was. Excuse me. I'm having a moment here all by myself. <laughs> this is from Rania J and this is Musk. Oh, help me with this pronunciation. Musk Moshus, Moshus, whatever. Who cares what it's called? This is, first of all, the simplicity of the bottle. In fact, the bottle shape reminds me of the Veronique Gabay bottle shape, except smaller. How adorable is that? I like the simplicity of the bottle design and the label and the aesthetic of the whole thing. First of all, I had a coworker years ago named Rania, who I was very fond of. I just enjoyed her so much. So I immediately liked the name of the house and like it evoked things for me from the past. This is a sweet, fruity, vanilla, musky fragrance with a sandalwood base. That's it. It is kind of simple for what it is. It is the ultimate your skin but better fragrance. If you only had to get one, I would say forget all of the ones that are being hyped up out there. And I like a lot of those too. And I have some and I'm going to talk about them in an upcoming video. But for me, this is the ultimate feminine your skin but better fragrance. There's something so subtly sweet and delicate musky with the creaminess of a sandalwood base. And the sandalwood is so light, almost like a ghost impression of sandalwood. And I love that. I love the way that it comes together here. I think the fruity aspect is a black currant note, if I'm not mistaken, but I couldn't pick that out. I just get something sweet and fruity and creamy almost. The vanilla and the musk and the sandalwood, it's light and it's subtle and it just hovers close to the skin, but it's long lasting. Friends, this is excellence in a bottle, excellence in a bottle. What was I thinking waiting so long <laughs> to purchase this? So, so glad to have this. Look at the RJ in the cap stamped in, so cute, so cute. This is probably my favorite from this crazy, like recent super splurge from all of those sales. I, it just, it leaves me speechless with its beauty. Subtle, feminine, sweet, hovering right above your skin. You wanna nuzzle into yourself. Beautiful, beautiful. Would not hesitate to wear this anywhere and especially around the house, running errands in the office, hanging out with friends, even date night, even date night. I think it might get lost in a special occasion situation if you were like in a big party with a lot of people. This might get lost in that situation, but anything outside of that, without a doubt, would not hesitate to wear this. Enormous win. I cannot give this enough praise and I give this a full 10 out of 10 for what it is. A your skin but better, sweet, subtle, musky, woody, creamy, delicious fragrance. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're still here, please, can you leave me a little flower in the comments? Any kind of flower you want. Love you guys. See you in the next video. Take care, friends.